Lovely things. Look at that. Lovely. Over there, the one that's approaching. It's took some several big hits. No long battle. Well, that was a good hit. What was that? That was a pirate shell again. <laughs> Absolutely excellent. Look at that list. That is gone. Decimated. Oh, excellent. Three. Look at the fires on that thing. Not having a good day. I'm not surprised that that is sinking to be completely honest with you. If you're like me and love a bargain, then you're going to love the link in the description as it's going to take you to Instant Gaming, which is a platform that will save you a lot of money on all of your games. This includes Steam, GOG, PlayStation and Xbox also, as well as many others. I've bought a couple of games from here and saved myself some money. You should too. The link is in the description. Be sure to check it out. You'll actually be surprised just how much you will save. Not only will it be helping me out, but you'll be helping yourself out as well. Be sure to check it out. The link's in the description. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, where we're looking at being at war with three different countries at the same time. This is a Moist Tea Gaming video. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button because there's plenty more to come. We've just done a successful invasion of the Western Sahara and the Canary Islands, and now we're having a dabble at doing an invasion of the Spanish mainland, Western Spain, the province. Got plenty of ships floating around there, that is for sure. France has also had a dabble and taken southern Spain, but now France is under pressure because the Germans are on the way, typical. Trying to take over northern France, and this is only 1899, so we'll see what happens there. I have absolutely no idea. We are at war with Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Spain. So we're going to try, if we can, take this port in western Spain. If we can grab that, that will be fantastic. Two more turns until we know. If we can't grab that, then we're going to go for Sardinia. Try and get a base of some kind in the area so we can support our fleets. And if we can't do that, then we're going to go for western Sicily, which is a little bit bigger. We've probably got more of a chance in Sardinia anyway, so we'll see how we get on. Getting a presence here is vital. I do want to start taking over some of these provinces. We've started in Africa. We, apparently, you, you cannot go against the minor nations when you're away, even if they are allied with the major nations, which is an absolute nightmare for me. So we're going to be going with everything that's got a colour in it. And if it's not got an American flag on it, then we're going to be trying to uh, alleviate that. It would be good to get the Philippines out of the way, but that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Simply because we don't have the fleet on this side of the American continent. We've got our fleet here, which consists of four... Oh, oh yeah, that's it. We've got two Washington classes. And two of the older Kansas ships, which are ancient, I'm not going to lie. As well as the Augusta light cruisers floating around there. That's all we've got. We've currently got some Spanish ships desperately corded in. They can't go anywhere. They will have zero fuel as well. So we're going to have a dabble at them shortly. While the rest of the fleet is sat there doing some naval invading these other remaining Kansas class battleships are here just for tonnage more than anything. We've got six of them. I am going to mothball them. They are absolute trash. They were just the first battleship that we could build. This is what they are. This is technically a coastal defense ship. As you can see, it's very old. These are the first ones that we could build. We can't even actually use them anymore because it is classed as obsolete. These are the Washingtons, a much more successful design. As you can see, they are much more of a modern weapon. These cannons are extremely effective. We have a rangefinder on here and various other bits. I'm yet to have one take a torpedo hit, but they do have torpedo protection. They're quite girthy. 
and everything else in between. The guns are probably a little bit undermanned with the 9.9 inch gun there but they're doing a decent enough job for now. These ones are doing the heavy work to be completely honest. These are the secondaries. I think they're 6 inch guns. Or they may even be 5 inch. I'm not entirely too sure. But still these are a vast improvement over the other one. Got plenty of these built now. Enough to replace all of the Kansas battleships which is fine. These weigh actually about double what they do. And are probably due for some kind of refit, to be completely honest. But until our naval invasions are done, they're going to be in active service. We do have the Savannah, which we need to get rid of. That was a up, supposed to be an update for the Augusta, but we never ended up building any. Brazil wanted a couple of these, our allies, but they are no longer being built, so we can successfully delete that one. The Augusta is quite old. We'll have a look. But it does do a very good job. I've lost, I think, two of these, mainly due to torpedo hits and a flash fire, I think. Not fantastic. They are designed to be quite anti-flash fire resistant, but they still got the better of them. They are quite nice. They are the older style gun, but there's enough of them there to actually do some serious damage. They do some torpedo actions as well. They've got one at the front which the range is quite nice, it's usually better than the enemies currently so far which is very good, it seems to be deterring the enemy from getting too close now an update to that is this, which is a armoured cruiser hull very much an improvement in many respects in terms of survivability in general and updated guns and everything else but it does lack main larger armament so this is a good solid six inch gun should be very accurate but there's only two of them and they're only single barrels now we've got plenty of three inch guns but they are going to lack range so they're going to cause havoc we're not too sure how these are going to go on but this is a different style altogether over the augusta so we'll have to see how these play out then we have the charleston this is a light cruiser Mark II with the improved guns and everything else. This is a more direct relative to the Augusta light cruiser. Definitely on the battle hull, but this definitely will not survive as good as the... I, I can't pronounce that. Cincinnati? No idea, but anyway, that's what it's called. But yes, this is much more closer relative, so what I'm gradually doing is as we lose a few Augustas to Warfare, I'm replacing them with the Cincinnati ones. And then once I lose some more, I will be replacing the other half of the fleet with Charlestons. Now we'll just see how that happens. If we don't lose any, then we're going to just wait and do a, probably a new design for the Charleston. So then we won't end up actually using this ship if the Augustas are still very much useful. But we'll just have to see. We also built this. This, you might think, what on earth is that? There's nothing on it. But if you've been keeping up with the series, this is a mining ship only. This is quite rapid. It's got no armor on it whatsoever. As soon as it gets hit, it's probably going to explode into a million pieces. However, it is really quick, so any other cruiser will not be able to catch it. The only thing that will, will be a torpedo cruiser. No, not a torpedo cruiser, a torpedo boat. However, this does have a gun on the back, so when it is running away from the enemy, it can shoot them. There's no other armament on it. And you think that this should be more accurate because it's a more stable vessel in general than a torpedo boat. So hopefully it will be able to get away from them. These are just going to be stationed in port so that they can do defensive mine work. They are really cheap. Uh, this only costs a million, whereas the new Charleston costs seven and a half nearly, and the Augusta Mark IIs, even there, around four. So all well and good. Probably want to try and get a few of these sorted out. I was going to do it on a destroyer, but we don't actually have any of them sorted just yet. We got the torpedo boat destroyer, but you cannot fit mine work on there, so we resorted to having that ship. 
Talking of ships, we are building four of the Cincinnati um, light cruisers. Those were the armoured cruiser ones. We're building one of the... Oh, another one of them for Brazil. And that's the only ships that we actually have under construction. Now, finances are a little bit scarce. That is why I'm a little bit meh about building more right now. We are building a bigger shipyard, which is draining a lot of the cash. Everything is at full whack, but we do have a rather large bank account, so I'm not too worried right now. However, it is going to be concerning because we are at war and we're going to need more money. Getting rid of those old battleships will be a stepping stone. We can mothball them and see what happens then. But right now, I need them over here to do the tonnage. So another option is actually to have this fleet go and smash some of the Spanish Empire ships. There are two of the old Kansas type battleships here. We can get them all involved in this. Once that is dealt with, we can then move back and put them in mothballs. That should free up some cash. The fleet itself, I'm going to even just leave in port potentially because there are no threats over here. That will save us some money. Yes, they won't get trained as much, which is not ideal, but we can leave them there. I could send them over to the Philippines, but we don't have any bases over here at all. So they run out of supply, no fuel, no ammunition. It doesn't do them any good. They end up just sitting there. They can't even get transports. Remember, these are really early tech ships. I go for 10k range. Well, not 10k, 10,000 range and that will not be enough to sustain them in the Philippines but well, that's going to be where we're going to save a little bit of money we're going to gain money once we do some successful murderage over here hopefully as we take over some provinces research wise we're up to here we're going to actually get the destroyer class hopefully that will have some ability to do some mine laying on it so we're going to wait until we've got that, see if we can do a design which is suitable for mine laying, which is going to be super cheap, that will be ideal. Cruiser design, we're steadily going for the light cruiser, increasing that. Because as you can see, we have a limit and really we want it to go up to stupid amounts. If we can get a super juicy armoured up semi-armoured cruiser of 7,000 tonnes, that would be ideal. Now, we can already max out the battleships. But again, I'm also doing a bit of a test. Now, the battleship 2 hull, that might be something to consider. But it's, it is more resistant, but floatability is a little bit meh. As you can see, it is a better stable gun platform, though. So I am actually going to be transferring over to this. But the Washingtons are still a very capable ship. They are going to get replaced for some time, so I will be doing a refit of them just to keep them up to date. See how we get on with that. Eventually I might go to the battleship hull, but it may be a considerable time before we get over to that stage. So, we're going to leave that ship for now, gradually keep getting the armoured cruiser max weight bumped up, then these will be significantly more sturdier of a vessel. More weight is more armour, more armament and everything else in between which is perfect. Not bothered about the little boats, they don't have the range and they're very flimsy and I don't particularly like losing ships. But that's a no from me. We're also improving the armour quality because it's somewhere near. This will reduce weight which is fabulous. Does increase the cost but that's just advancement. The weight is the main thing, meaning we can have more armor on. Small guns, we're getting Mark 8, Mark 2s, sorry, Mark 2 8 inch guns soon, which is wonderful. Other tech that we've got going on, we're thinking about some of these. I'm not too bothered about that. What I, I would like is, we, well, we definitely need the cruiser, light cruisers, to be more substantial of a ship. Might even end up going for hull strengthening just because then we could potentially have a new hull. Torpedoes are proving very effective at range. We have this one where our range is now 1500 meters. 
which is fantastic. Usually the enemy are floating around 900. So torpedoes are becoming more and more and more of a prominent thing, which is fabulous. Gun layout, what's this? Anti-flash, meh, maybe on the cruisers. We've had a couple of them explode in a glorious fire. But well, the rest of it, we're just leaving for now. I do want the naval uh, dual barrels on the guns. I'm not going to lie, I do want that. So we may end up going a little bit down the turret mechanisms, but we'll just see what pops up. And then we'll go for priorities. So that's where we're at. So we're going to see what we can uh, achieve. I think we're going to go straight for these, though. I'm not going to lie. We'll proceed further down there and see if we can... And tice these into a juicy battle. China has had a revolution, that's interesting. And now we've got those destroyer hulls, so we'll have a look at that in a moment. Excellent. Our naval invasion does appear to be going well. We have murdered 5,000 or close to 6,000 people, where we've only lost a thousand. One more turn on that, we'll see what happens. Relationship wise we are very close to being at war with many other nations as you can see China being one of them and Germany being the other China are on the other side of the world pretty much so I'm not too interested in that that'll be fine but Germany I don't want to be going to war with them because they'll they're a threat to my fleet and as you can see they're already at war with France and things. I'd rather just let them smash each other to bits while we take control of a bit of Spain and maybe it Italy. So we'll uh, try and improve relations with them continuously. China, they've got bits, but they're going to be... Let's have a look at them, actually. Politics of China. The flag's changed as well because of the revolution. They're not at war with anybody. But we could get dragged into a war with Japan and Germany. We're going to need to try and keep our relations high enough with both of them, actually. If we go to war with them accidentally somehow, then it's going to be messy. We need to creep close to this enemy fleet again. A little bit at a time. And let's have a look at building that new destroyer and see what we can do with it. Well, that is the torpedo boat. We can max them out. Then you've got the Torpedo Boat Destroyer, which is just a bigger torpedo boat. Uh, then you have the Destroyer. This is definitely interesting. Smaller than the Torpedo Boat one. About the same size as the Torpedo Boat by the looks of things. It's interesting. Overall, the floatability is just a better ship all around. It's more stable. It's more resistant. It has significantly more crew, but the speed, look at that speed, that is much improved. And we can stick mines on them, that is fabulous. As well as other tech. Ah, uh, yeah, this is much better. So these, we can stick these everywhere. So let's, what's that? 33.5, we'll go for that straight away. We'll just stick with the optimum, that'll do us fine. Range, do we want them in the fleet? I don't know. They're fast, but the th you can't really stick any armor on them, so they're really flimsy. I mean, they could be useful. I think I want to concentrate on the battleships and the cruisers for the time being. We still need to replace all the other light cruisers. So I think for now, I mean, look at the cost already. This is quite an advanced ship, I think. That's a little bit upsetting. If these are going to be quite expensive, it isn't going to be worth it. If we have a look at the other one, it only costs us... There we go, a million. Maintenance, 56 a month. This, it won't show it just yet, but it may up here. I see, look, it's four times as much. So this ship is not going to be good as a destroyer. Or not as a destroyer, as a, as a mine layer. But, you've got to admit though, these would be good in the colonies, but we don't really have any of them yet, and then the Augustus could probably do a good job of that anyway. For a cheaper price as well, so I'm very dubious 
We'll make one in concept anyway, just to see what we can get. Boilers will go induced. We'll go for the steam doodars. We'll go for a balanced rudder because that's what I like to keep the speed on the turn. Go for a double bottom hull because that's what I always have. I don't necessarily do the reinforced bulkheads, but it might be an idea on a ship like this. Anti flood, definitely. Mining, that's what the primarily going to be used for as well as colonies and things. Look at the cost. Oh, this is this is a little bit weird, not going to lie. We can stick a 5 inch gun on there, which is quite nice. We can stick that right at the front, we can stick one at the back. We can really go right far at the back. Now if we were to do that, that you can see the main armor belt. The further back we go, the more armor is needed. Which is this bit here. Well, that'll be the main armor belt. We can stick it right down here. More armor is needed. And so on. Can't stick that any further forward. We can bung it right down there though. And see what else we've got. We've got the front tower. That ain't gonna work there, but we can stick it down here, so that might be the way. We've got a rear tower, which we can potentially stick down here. See what happens with that. This gun still has very good, nice range on it. Funnel-wise, we've got some standard funnels. The millions of these things that we can stick on. Engine efficiency is through the roof already, so that's quite nice. We do have the range. If we go for natural, stick another one on. We do have good range there. That is more weight, but it's better than the normal ones. The induced boilers... See, if we look, the normal ones, fuel capacity is reduced, but the cost goes down. The weight go or cost per weight, the fuel efficiency is up, the fuel storage is down, the fuel cost is down. I'm not bothered about cost. So if we go for the induced ones, the smoke interference goes up and everything else vibrations well to be fair though i live with that but really one one funnel of oh no two funnels are going to be it so we're looking at two funnels torpedo launchers these are what these are going to be absolutely pristine for but are we going to use them that is the question do we stick another gun on or do we stick plenty of these on we could even go like that that's just nasty. Look at the weight. That is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is going to happen. Let's have a look at this. You could build a bigger one. And even that wouldn't be enough. I mean, yeah, I know that is a lot of torpedoes. But still, you know. The cost of the ship itself, I don't think it's currently going to be valid. I really don't. It's not going to work for us at this moment in time, I don't think. So we may have to wait. It's a very nice looking ship. Those guns are a little bit extreme. It looks really big on there, not going to lie. I mean, what's the armor on these? Can we stick armor on these turrets? We can. Can we do it on these? No, we can't. Right, okay. Well, that will save us a lot, but it's hard to say what we're going to go for here. Could shuffle all this back slightly, I suppose. See how about doing a little bit of that. See, we've not even looked at the armor yet. Even if we just went something like two of them, for example. Or even if we just went for one gun. That's reduced the weight a little bit. We can't stick these further down here because they just don't like it. We could go for just a single. It would be nice to have an option to go left and right. I'd rather do that, to be completely honest. Another gun at the back. I like my guns. The guns are very good. 
Especially if it's just going to be a speed demon. Take that off though. We've got one solid gun at the front. Will that be enough? I've no idea. Absolutely no idea. Range finder, we can stick one of these on it. Long range accuracy. Everything else. Splash interference. Oh, that's well and truly wonderful. We can go for standard ratio. Small, well, light shell size. Reduced ammunition, that's what we go for on everything. Gun cotton. Blah de blah. Standard wheel. Oh, we'll go for normal. Ooh, torpedo girthiness. Do you want to start sticking the bigger torpedoes on? Now is that, oh we've already gone over the thing, but 850 I think that says. Oh, is it going to be worth it though, you know? Because there's no armour on them. You stick one shell inside of this thing and it is done. Like, done done. I'd rather have the other one. I'd rather have an Augusta than one of these. Yes, this is stupidly much quicker. But, that doesn't matter because they'll just swim circles around the battleships anyway. Because you don't need it to be stupidly fast and I always want the battleships in there. So at the moment, these aren't valid, even as a mine layer. Simply because the other one that I did, the Reno, costs so much less. So this is going to be the ship. Even though the displacement is a lot, the cost is a quarter of the destroyer, and the maintenance is a quarter of the destroyer as well. If you have a look here, cost and maintenance is just stupidly high compared to this, so why wouldn't I do this? Yes, this will legit only be doing mine laying, but I could probably quite easily stick a torpedo at the front of it and it'll be just as good. Far from the speed. And I'm going for survivability more than anything else. Especially on this kind of ship. But at the moment, I do not have a place for that destroyer. That's going to disappoint some people and think, oh, why don't you just stick them in? They're going to get blown up. I don't want to spend a lot of money on this if they're just going to get blown up. I would rather have one of these in it. Absolutely. I'd rather have... Oh, I've put the gun on wrong. Oh, man. I'm going to have to fix that. Not going to lie. But it is what it is. Could do that in the refit. <laughs> oh, man. Some people are going to be crying at watching that. Crying myself. Not going to lie. You didn't see anything. It's all good. But, yeah. That destroyer. No. Not going to happen. So on that note, we'll just proceed to smash these. Oh, we are moving them forward, so that's all good. We're going to see if we can do this invasion. Might as well turn the research off for the destroyer design. Oh, here we go. We've managed to grab them. We have cornered an enemy task force. Oh, yes, indeed. Look at these. Our new battleships are in here. These are going to get their first blood. They've not seen action yet, these two. Look at the weight difference, 18,000 tons versus their bigger ship here, which is around 4,000 tons. Excellent. They still do pose a threat, though. Their CAs do sink rather stupidly. It's quite funny. But their light cruisers are filled, and I mean filled, full of torpedoes. They get close, we're going to be in trouble. Need to be wary of that. So here we have it. This is the... <laughs> yeah, they're going to get smashed, we know this, but I can still lose a ship very easily if I am not careful. Now, these older ones, I'm going to keep in a separate line. Oh, do I? Do I just keep them all together? Four battleships. Look at the difference, man. These are the old ones. Such a stark difference. And you've got this one, much more modern. Very nice. I'll keep these in a battle line. They're going to be incredibly slow. Might just whack them on full whack. 17 knots. Which for these ships is going to be around... I suppose they're all in the same thing. But we'll stick them on full whack. Of 17. Should be fine. The game has actually done things in a little bit of a... 
order that I actually almost like. We've got four screening, which I'm not. I'm, I'm going to change. There's still a substantial fleet out there that I want to concentrate fire on. And then the battle line, yeah, that's the thing that we also want. So we're going to get these in a battle line as well. Keep these matching with the battleship line of 17. They're all nicely behaved. This one we're going to have going 18 knots because it's going to take the fleet a while to get into actual position. The enemy is directly north of us, so when we sight them we're going to have to have a fiddle. What I may even do is get all the screening ships, all the light cruisers following each other. That's probably the best play to do right now. They are very far away though, so I'm not too worried. We'll just go full steam ahead, I suppose. They are getting closer. Our ships are now in a bit more of a line going that way. And now we really are pretty close. First ship is spotted. That is one of their armoured cruisers. Big blobs of rubbish, which is fine. The guns do actually hurt if they hit. But they're extremely stuck tall and just sink like all nothing. A couple of hits in and they are thoroughly done. So what I do want is I want these ships to go on a more of a that way trajectory. While these ships will go that way as well but in a covering kind of motion. Something like that. We'll see how that turns out. Better speed them up as well just so they get that little bit ahead of the battleships. These are all doing marvellous things. They're on follow, but they are allowed to go full back. More of them are being visible. Excellent. But this is all of their ships right there. They've got three armoured cruisers and six light cruisers. Would appear that they're coming in for us and having a dabble. This is fine. I can deal with that as long as we do enough damage to them. On the approach so as things are now they're probably going to intercept around here which isn't ideal for first contact i would like a few more guns on them so if i go that way it should be good first shots have just been fired aiming at the aragon the aragon This is a seasoned ship, I believe. Oh no, the green. Ha! <laughs> Never mind. They may have not seen combat yet, these ones. Battleships are probably going to open fire soon. Waiting for them, really. What are they aiming for? Can't seem to decide. Interesting. As you can see, they are coming full steam ahead. The cruisers are trying to slap them. We just scored a good hit. We destroyed something on it. We ride at us. That is very dangerous. They are filled with torpedoes. Three on each side. If three of those torpedoes hit one of our ships, we are done. They really are coming in. Followed by two others. Hopefully we can get some good solid hits on that soon. It is at a funny angle, but we're going to get a lot more fire on this. Because of the angle, they are seeming to ricochet off. They aren't armoured up very well, these ships. And it is doing a hard left. That could mean that we're going to go in for some good explosions soon. They are taking fire now as well from the battleships. Excellent news. Everything is currently missing. Nearly in torpedo range, I bet. That was the pretty much 10 inch guns from the battleship missing there. So they are aiming for this now. Can't see that much because of the smoke, but probably what's keeping it alive right now. We have a torpedo in the water, it is coming. That would have been launched from the Langley. Oh, we've got a good hit. A couple of them were blocked then. That torpedo is coming in nice and speedy. 
This ship is doing a hard manoeuvre to attempt to get out of there. Is it going to be enough? Oh, it's taken a few hits. Oh, it managed to dodge it. Wow, that is impressive. That was a just about, and now it starts to make its steady retreat. The only reason that ship is still alive is because the angle that it was on. Definitely a interesting move from the AI there. It looks like they're going to go away back to their other ships. We've also got the armoured cruisers floating around up there, which we're going to start making our way over to. It would appear that we've just managed to get a million hits on the Argon. We've just missed that. That's a shame. Engines are damaged. Oh, wow. We really must have absolutely smashed it there. All of a sudden. Two inch hit. Two inch hit. Four, uh, two, uh, five inch hit there. Oh, there was loads. That is going down. Another hit there. These are the five inch guns from the light cruisers. Another one. Popping up here. Five inch hit. That's a two inch hit, even they're going in. That is going down rapido, so that's going to be a successful rapid death. Excellent. Now we need to think about getting over here. Look at all the fire going towards it, it's done, leave it alone guys. Definitely done, nine inch gun coming in, just about missed. Need to aim this a little bit more to that way. That's that ship done. Start proceeding towards them. See what happens. We could probably slow this line down slightly to 17 knots. The maximum that this line can go is 17. Ish. That's the maximum of the old ships. That was a crushing blow to the Spanish fleet there. Instantly gone. Washington is looking rather nice. Keeps firing and doing lovely things. Look at that. Lovely. Those are just the five inches. We are hitting that other ship. Over there, the one that's approaching. It's took some several big hits. Oh, wow. It really has taken some big hits. Not going to be alive for much longer if it carries on. Another big hit. Nine inch coming in. Oh, it missed. This is fantastic. This thing is burning like no tomorrow. The other ship seems to have decided to. Oh, wow. It's still coming in. Overpen straight through. Getting absolutely smashed. A torpedo is on the way. Is it going to get murdered? I don't know, you know. Going, it's going to go down regardless. It's taking a lot of hits. It's already taking water. It's listing heavily. This is definitely going to be the killing blow if it does hit. It seems to be very good at manoeuvring around these torpedoes. I'll give them that. I think it's going to hit. I honestly do. It is. It's there. Excellent. That is going to be a rather large hole in the bottom of that ship. Water is going to be flooding in. Look at all that. Desperately coming in. A lot of the ship is on fire. Engines are being flooded. It's going to be stationary in the water soon. The com comms tower is destroyed. Not having a good day. That has been cleaned up very quickly. And because of that, they're not going to be able to control the... Another hit goes in. They're not going to be able to control the damage. It's sinking super quick now. That ship is gone. That is a mess. Yet, despite that... Oh no, they have turned away. The pencil... Pen the what? The Petty Sweller has decided to turn away. Now we're looking at the armoured cruisers of the enemy ships. They are firing at us. Currently we are not in a good enough angle or whatever. I do have them on to save ammunition because I don't want to have them squirting at the enemy for no particular reason. We have reduced ammunition, so I only want to be shooting the enemy if we have a good chance of murdering them. They are trying to shoot us with their main cannon. 
They've also got a few 4.1s which are shooting us. Whether they can do anything or not is questionable. Because we've got some mighty thick armour on these Augusta class ships. They're not too shabby at all really. We are actually firing back. That one's gone on a funny angle so we are going to start squirting something at it. If we get a few good hits like that, that is not going to be ha having a happy day. I can guarantee you that. Our fleet is moving in. I'm going to keep going on this course. We could do with slowing these down slightly. Something hit. What was that? Oh, we hit the main tower on the Pen Penisuela. Nice. Little engagement still going on down there. We can leave them to it. I'm sure it can handle itself. This is going to look pretty messy soon. We have a look at this. Battleships aren't really playing a huge part in this so far. These especially haven't really done anything. They're not in range. Whereas the light cruisers are causing flooding. We've done some major damage. We've hit the engine compartment in those armoured cruisers. Zooming in as best as we can. They are returning fire still. But that was a big hit. Not nice. Look at the hole there. That is enormous. I wish she said that, but never mind. Looking at this, it's not going to be... not going anywhere. It's just going to get slapped. Look at that. Just going to be gone. Absolutely decimated. That hole, it really is enormous. Look at it all, all underneath of there. That's gone. Look at the water. Gone. Wow. Instantly. Cruisers, what a ship, man. These battleships are barely doing anything. See if we can get them closer. I'm going to go for the other one. Down here, it looks like the Penisuela is just going to be lingering around the back for a while. It's taken a couple of hits. It's still squirting at us to some degree, but uh, apparently our ship isn't that concerned. It is returning fire, but nothing is going on too badly over here. This section, it would appear to be the Sanyan is going to be the next to get absolutely decimated. The light cruisers over here are coming back in for a gander. Appears that they want to help their friends after all. It's like playing naval action, this, if you've ever played that. Some people disappear and some people come back. <laughs> anyway, that's for another time. These are definitely going to get destroyed. We are at risk of being damaged ourselves here. These 6.6 .6 inch guns are definitely powerful enough to get through the armour of the Alban of the yeah, the Albany. Would we hit them again? Or did they just bounce off? I'm not too sure. I think the two inches got in. Oh that was a good one. That's a five inch hit again from the cruiser. These five inch guns on these things are rather significant. So this is what I've been debating. Especially in the design of the armoured cruiser that I've got. They've got two six inch guns on them. Yes, there's only two, but they should be very accurate. Because of the masts that they have on. Now only a couple of these six or five inch shells are actually going. Oh, that was the battleship shooting that then. But yeah, only a couple of them are actually going in. So we could have two that can actually hit. This should be good enough. They should do the same damage, in theory, at least. Because the hit ratio should be much higher. Now, that would be fantastic. Because that ship, in particular, is a much more robust, sturdy vessel. And should be much more survivable. This ship is already listing, taken on water. So is that one. They're definitely having a hard time of it. Lots of shells coming in, but we are, are in danger of being shot ourselves. Nothing significant so far, but if we get a bad hit, then they're going to really be feeling it. What is this ship doing? It's having an absolute meltdown. Not entirely sure what was going on there, but the fleet is now actually starting to get into position. But their friends are now also on the way. The light cruisers are here. I do need to stay cautious. The fleet is being very nicely responsive. I may even get these in a closer formation. Get them on tight formation. This 
to mean we have a higher concentration of fire, but it will increase our susceptibility to torpedoes. Now we're going to try and bring these battleships in closer. We're not getting enough of the action. This leading ship, the Albany, has been an absolute joy to watch destroy the enemy. Again, more sh shells are going straight through. This ship is desperately on fire. But it would appear that it's going to be okay. Get rid of some of that. Get rid of the shot in part. That causes a lot of lag, it really does. We'll go on the We'll keep on that, we'll keep that happy. Crew, we're not that bothered about. You never lose too many anyway, unless it's a prolonged battle. Well, that was a good hit. What was that? That was a five-inch shell again. Going straight into the S Santiago, causing major flooding. We are having a few fires on the Albany. Well, that was another big one. Oh, wow, that was a juicy one. That was another five-inch shell going in. Listing heavily. That's not going to be very happy. More. Wow, that's really gone in. Again, the five inch shells. That's going down rapid. They must have exploded at just the right moment to rip a massive hole in the ship. Absolutely excellent. Look at that list. That is gone. Now we have another one over here looking like it's about to be. So, no, the Sanyan is still doing alright. It's took a few hits. If these go in, it's in trouble. Ooh, that sounded good. But that seemed to uh, wiggle off. Overpen. Oh, it went straight through the thing. Caused flooding, but that 9-inch shell, well, 10-inch shell went straight through. Now, if that had have exploded, that would have been a real mess. Now, we've got this to deal with. This is more at the back of the line. Got the battleships and everything else starting to target the Santa Lucia more of those light cruisers hopefully they get some good hits in we've got a couple of ricochets and blocks the angle is protecting them we've not really suffered any damage on our fleet but we also need to consider that our fleet is actually starting to drift away so we do need to do a major course correction and get them right back in it by doing a full 90 degree turn there this isn't looking too pretty if these ships get close then I'm not going to be too happy about it. What was that? Lots of cannons, but they all missed again. Come on, battleship. Washington, please shoot them. That's from the Kansas. I think this may be one of the originals that we built. I hear a torpedo. That's from the enemy. They must have increased their range. 1.2 kilometers. Yes. Uh-oh, this ain't good. That's going for this. We have also fired another shot as well. We'll go for avoid torpedoes. Gonna send them all a little bit crazy, and no, but it is what it is. I don't know if they fixed that yet. It is diverting. The battleship isn't gonna be at risk. Ours has missed. But we are doing alright. Have they fixed it properly? They might have, I'm not too sure. Oh that was a big hit. That's a five-inch shell going in. That's going to cause a lot of flooding. The engine compartment is at risk. We have managed to evade that torpedo. That is rather excellent. So we better turn that off before they go a bit too skew with. Because they really do go skew with at times when that happens. The ship is well out of the way of that. This ship's just going to follow that ship and then it's just going to lose all of everything. We are still shooting the Santa Lucia. The water has intercepted and seeped into the engine compartment so this ship is now pretty much dead in the water that went straight through man if one of these explodes into it that would be absolutely glorious straight through the armor though that is a little bit disappointing i would have liked to have seen that explosion that torpedo has gone through nicely the line has not been broken it will get readjusted now the battleships are going to be maneuvering back around this way the light cruisers are doing that sharp turn this will intercept the sanyan and looking at it it's taking a few hits still very much fully functional ship though oh that was a nasty one what was that that was a two inch gun that hit something 
Oh, that was a lucky shot. That hit the torpedo launchers and took them out. That is definitely a lucky shot. That does happen. We're still squirting at this one. Oh, did, what happened here? Oh, a five-inch shell hit it right at the front and it's causing serious flooding. That was a good shot. I'm surprised that went in. Especially at that angle. That is quite impressive. Four Bell only has 0 0.8 inches of armor, which isn't much, but the angle of it really does do something significant to it. Now, our battleships are still getting some shots. That was a nice one. Did you see that? Santa Lucia, that is the crippled ship. That just took a massive hit. More flooding is coming in. That was from that was the overpen as well. Where has it gone? Yeah, belts overpen. So that went straight through the thing again. Not even an explosion. Wow, that would have yeah, I'm not surprised that caused more flooding. We're slowly sweeping around. The line is still maintaining, which is wonderful to see. Sanyan is still going at full pelt. I do believe that it's trying to escape, so we're going to go closer. Not too much closer though, just in line with it at least. Try and get these battleships closer as well. It's quite difficult because I do want them to be protected by the light cruisers. They're going to be the big guns. So we'll see what happens. The Washingtons play a better role at that than the others. But the Kansas are just there because they are there. I wanted the extra firepower just in case. The stats are going to be rubbish, but it is still a nice juicy ship that sat there playing its role. Now, over here, we are still looking like these ships are getting it away from the main firing arc from the fleet. The Penicillu, I'm probably murdering these names, took some water on that front. It's going to slow it down. Not going to be very sturdy now. That bow should be further in the water. But if we get another couple of good hits down there, it's not going to be a happy bunny. It does appear like the Santa Lucia is coming back around. Maybe they're all trying to get back into the formation. But what I am going to do is I'm going to be cheeky. I'm going to send the fleet right through the middle. Hopefully we can shoot. Because we can shoot from both sides. Get all these guns working. Get the right hand side shooting this armoured cruiser while the left starts to work on the other side of these ships. Battleships are going to have to go the long way around, but it is what it is. We can probably slow these down. Put it down to 15. We'll see what happens. That was another good hit. What was that? We're still shooting this ship. Let's see how much more of a beating this can take. Oh, that was a good one. That's a 5-inch hit there. Nice. That's going to cause more flooding, that's for sure. It does appear that it already is, actually, if you look at it. Definitely listing. It's taken an absolute battering as this thing. Not great. Look at the size of that hole. That's a juicy one. Somehow they have not managed to hit our ships. That was another good hit. Straight through it, though. That's going to be close. Oh, I thought that was going to hit the Albany then. The Albany has really been bold during this entire engagement. Another overpen straight through. Man. We're ripping through the armor. If we had HE, maybe it might be worth switching the HE from just pure high explosive to a more intermediate kind of shell. It might be better. Because we are using the armor piercing, but it just seems to be going straight through them. Maybe we do need to look at the shells. We don't have too many. Oh, we took a hit. Oh. Oh, it's completely fine though. We're all good. Oh, that that was a good hit though. We've got flooding on that one. That was only from though a oh deck penetration. How's it done that? No, that couldn't have been a deck penetration. Main belt penetration. Let's have a look at that again. Ball belt penetration. Oh, right. Yeah, so the 4.1 hit the front. Right on the nose. That's caused flooding in the Albany. So it's going to go back to the back of the line now, I think. Yeah, it is. And the Albany will go over to the 
back of the following line. Not something that I particularly agree with, but this Montgomery we can now stick in the other battle line. Something like that. See what happens. We've still got four and four then. This battle line is still going to be proceeding forwards like this. By the battleships, we do need them to keep going round this way. That way we can still hopefully engage. Sanyan is not going to get away. Don't worry, the rudder is now destroyed. There's plenty of fires on it. It's listing badly. It's not going to recover. A few more good hits and we have nailed that one in the bag. We'll probably get it as we're manoeuvring. If we can get an engine block damaged on that, that would significantly increase the chances. This ship is still taking fire. I may actually get them to do a smoke screen to obstruct the targeting of enemy ships. That would seem wise to do. Now the Chattanooga, I think that's how you say that, taking a few hits. But oh, look at that. What was that? Torpedo detonation. Nice, whatever that was. Oh, it's destroyed all the torpedoes on it. That is fabulous. They're going to be taking on a lot of water now. The engines are done. At least to a degree, it's actually recovering somewhat, but it's still taking more damage. Our ships are coming in for a closer gander. Still taking on water. We'll see how that recovers. Now that, the Albany is going to get very danger close now to the Penis, Penis Whaler. And we do have battleship support. If they can actually hit the target, that would be fabulous. A few ricochets. I'm just, oh, there's no torpedoes on that, so that's brilliant. This could be a very good decision. The Albany can get close enough to the Penny Swear that we could torpedo that ship. What I am concerned about though is this, the Angelusia is getting also within torpedo range of the Albany. Now that is fully stocked on torpedoes, not ideal. But we do have a bit of a circle of death forming. I am concerned about the Albany. We may, may need to interfere and pull it out of there. Follow. We need the speed to increase, chaps. What are you doing? Oh, it is increasing now. That's fine. Just need to make sure that we do not get alongside it too much. We may want to increase the speed of all our ships here. We'll go for full whack. In fact, we'll go for 18 knots. Something took a hit there. Penetration. The rear of the ship really is getting absolutely hammered. Nobody likes it when your rear is getting hammered. Tends to make ships sink. We took a hit over here as well. Though. There's a torpedo in the water. This is what we suspected. We need to put the torpedo avoidance on now. Yeah, put it all on. It is going to be doing its thing. It seems to be working. I think we've got out of the way of that. We haven't launched any torpedoes of our own. These are all bailing as well. We're getting a few good hits in though. This is getting a bit danger close. These battleships need to change their line to go that way. Turn them off the torpedo. Do that. There's another one in the way. This battle line over here, we can turn their torpedo avoidance off. It tends to, tends to send them a little bit funny. This has a load of torpedoes. If this shoots its torpedoes, we're going to be in trouble. At least the Delaware might be. That's one of the older ones, so I wouldn't mind if that went down. But oh, we've launched our own torpedoes. I forgot to put them on this. Oh, that might be the killing blow, but it might also... Oh, nice, but that ship is going to get hit by one itself. That is not going to be looking good. Turn, baby, turn. So you put torpedo avoidance on and they all go spazzy. Oh, that's going to hit, isn't it? It should be able to sustain one. This is one of the older ones. These are yet to be proven. That is a solid hit. That has caused flooding. Our torpedo, I don't think, hit. But that ship is now done. Excellent work, lads. Turn the torpedo avoidance back off again. don't think there's any more in the water. 
we are. Oh, there's that one there. I was missed. That ship is desperately going to be in the firing line, though. Oh, no. I missed one. The Langley's going to get hit. Oh, man. Nothing I can do about that now. Oh, but it was a dud. Yes. Excellent. That is good news. Now, we're going to swing this line back around. We are causing major flooding. That is the Santa Lucia still floating around. We've got another torpedo here. Oh, man. We're going to have to have torpedo avoidance on all of these because that is not going to be looking good if that gets in. The Angelucia may have just caused a blow. We've been quite lucky with torpedoes so far. And then that was a dud as well. Oh, brilliant. Nice. The Delaware. That took a torpedo hit, didn't it? Or was that a dud? I can't quite remember now. It did, but it's doing all right. That doesn't even have torpedo protection on it, I don't think. Maybe they can take quite a few of them. That's excellent news. They haven't really been battle tested properly. The light cruisers did all the work. Now that has just been absolutely decimated. Oh, excellent. That is superb shooting. Everybody got one in then, all having a quick share. Unloading everything into the same ship, and we have a ammo detonation. That was quite beautiful. I'm glad I'm recording all of this one. There's lots of things going on. That ship's going down like a ton of bricks. Look at it. It's been absolutely hammered. Flash fire now even. Absolutely supreme. Look at the fires on that thing not having a good day I'm not surprised that that is sinking to be completely honest with you not having a good day that's for sure so that is gone well and truly the one over here oh the Santa Lucia it's still floating but it's gonna get absolutely pummeled that 10 inch gun nearly went straight through it Somehow this ship is still floating. But it's launching torpedoes at us. No, 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 no. Avoid them. Avoid them. They do have torpedo avoidance on. We'll see how successful this is. They have improved it lately. Been absolutely pummeled. It can't take much more of this. All the officers are dead. Many holes in the side of the ship. But it still keeps floating. Is it going to get a torpedo hit before it actually... It, it is, you know. The Des Moines is going to get torpedoed. They can survive one. Oh, look at that. Oh, but that was another dud! No way! Wow! Excellent. And that ship is now down. Oh, man. Right, but this is now looking a little bit more of a problem. The Langley is charging head-on into the Pizarro, the pizza ship. We don't have any torpedoes on this ship. I think they got taken out. Yes, they did. That is unfortunate. This ship, though, the, the pizza ship, that's still got lots of torpedoes on it. So we do need to be well aware of that danger. This ship has somehow managed to escape everybody else. We need to get them going that way in general. Where's our battleships now? Oh, they're all the way down here. But we need to get them really in the, in the fight. We can just go that way. I'm sure they'll avoid the other ships which are following. Albany's still looking strong. Still firing. That was through the damage it took going straight through the bow of the ship. One of the four-inch guns from the enemy went straight through, I believe. It was a, quite a fortunate shot. But now I'm actually going to separate the two groups. I'm going to have this battle line going towards this pizza ship. Make sure that goes down. And we're going to have this line going towards the Penisuela. I'm going to have the battleships going straight down the middle of everything and seeing if they can actually get some of the action. The enemy have kind of sailed away, not going to lie. Do need to take these out. We can potentially get some torpedo runs on the go. Yeah, we're swinging back around. There's no torpedoes left on the Langley, but the Manchester does. Oh, it's just launched one. Excellent. That could be very decisive. 
It looks good, but the pizza could get out of the way in time. Now, we, the Langley just took a hit to the stern. That's fine. It's going to cause a little bit of flooding. Nothing they can't handle. The Salt Lake is proving to be a little bit more of a nuisance. That's currently leading the other line. We'll stick that. Oh, we've took damage. Why can we only go 18 knots? One of us has taken damage. I'm not too sure which one, but we need them to go over to the Venezuela. Torpedo hit. Nice. That is not going to do them any favours. Hitting the engine room. I do think it's time that we got larger torpedoes installed. It may even... I can't really improve the Augusta class anymore because since then, since we last did one, there's been an improvement in the gun. And the new gun won't fit, and there's no way to revert it back as far as I can tell, which is a little bit annoying, because I would like to stick some slightly bigger torpedoes on the thing. I don't think there's going to be weight room on it anyway, to be completely honest. But regardless, we're still going to be chasing these ships down. I'm going to turn torpedo, avoid... Oh man, what have I done here? Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Why are they all in one... Need the Albany to come... Oh, no. That one and that one. Right, all of these all need to detach. Detach. Are we good? You lot and you lot. Right, kind of messed this up slightly. Going to get away from the immersion here, but they're going to go full pelt that way, and these lot are going to go full pelt that way. They're all probably going to crash into each other, but it is what it is at this point. Not too bothered. Just turn the ship avoidance off and they'll do their thing a little bit quicker. Turn everybody to full speed ahead and everything should be fine. Not entirely sure what happened there, but I must have misclicked it at some point. Oh well, we're just chasing these two ships down more than anything right now, so we're going to speed things up a bit. Oh, we are well and truly having a naval crisis right now. Don't know what's going on, but they're all having a good, absolute banging party. We're gaining a little bit of cohesion again. I'm just going to keep swinging around this light cruiser with these ships and murder that. This one, oh, this one may get away. How fast is that? 20.7 knots. These are currently damaged. Which one can actually, which one is reduced to speed? One of them is. For some reason, we can't go full speed. It's got to be the Albany. We detach that. That one's going to get taken care of real quick. We detach the Albany. Tell that just to follow in the battleship battle line. These can then go full speed. Yep, there we go. Off you. Oh, my God. Oh, that's the other ones. Yeah, you, these guys can now go full speed and go. The pizza is now down. Let's get all of this on its way to this direction and hopefully smash the remaining parts of this. Now we do have the fleet on saving ammunition. I'm going to keep it at that just to see if we can actually catch this thing. What we are doing, for some reason the Venezuela has just kind of stopped. Which is all well and good. So it's me, but we're gaining on it anyway. But it has legit just stopped. It is the last remaining ship. Battleships might even be able to have their glory if they carry on. Nice, we've got some flooding. Oh, that was a big one. Five inch shell went straight through that thing and exploded and caused so much damage. This is going to go down. It's finally decided it doesn't want to get shot anymore. It is gaining some floatability back, but the structure on it is so knackered. More flooding. Yeah, it's not going to be having a good time of it. Get these spread around this way. Oh, that's going down all right. Come on, shoot it. Well, I think we all know what happens here, don't we? There we go, we finally got it. Nice. That was a good battle, I enjoyed that one. We didn't lose a ship. We took a little bit of damage, apparently nothing major according to this. I thought some of them would have been medium, seeing as we took a torpedo hit and such, but never mind. 
Victory, crew losses minimal, victory points stupid amounts and we murdered, well, what's left of the Spanish fleet I presume. Look at that, absolutely gone. Transport losses and everything else, absolutely fantastic intervention. Oh, okay, yeah, lots of other things. We've no way we've gained control of the mainland. Ah, oh, yes, absolutely beautiful. Would you look at that? We own part of Spain. Get your new house here. Let's do it. Oh, we've got a nice juicy army here as well. That is good. That's very good. If we were to go to war, oh, we may even end up going to smashing the. We could just go to Spain now, the mainland, and absolutely murder it. I don't know if that will mean that the colonies will remain in Spain's hand. Or it could mean that they just get, I don't know, turned neutral, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, we're going to find out one way or another. If it comes to it, and these do turn neutral, and we can't actually really grab them, we're just going to have to go to war with somebody. The Australian ones are quite a bit dim. The German ones aren't, well, they're just bad as well. But that's the thing about these ones, they do they are quite juicy. I'm wondering if we can get them in a peace deal. That would be interesting. I'd rather take the rest of the mainland Spain now. Lots of questions, lots of things to think about. But I hope you've enjoyed that battle and this episode. I'm gonna leave it here. Join me and others on the Discord. It'll be great to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next one, I am sure. See you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.